Greetings, I'm Kurt Fonger for South Florida Homes and Lifestyles. The lineup we have today is great. Home remodeling, new mortgage opportunities for first time home buyers, global insight for our area, community spotlights, highlights, and more starting in 10 seconds. Stay right here. This is PGA National, one of South Florida's iconic communities. With me, longtime realtor Kevin Kent, and Kevin, you know PGA National. I do, Kurt. Thank you for coming out today, and welcome to sunny South Florida. This is winter in Palm Beach Gardens, and it's obvious why people come from all over the country to be in this area. PGA National is one of the diamond lifestyle communities in northern Palm Beach County, very much sought after, has all the sports that you would want. It's got four championship level golf courses right here in the community over 40 unique neighborhoods with price ranges from the hundreds to almost two million dollars for the estate homes. You're going from a, a, a condo or apartment lifestyle to single family homes. You're exactly right. There's there's condominiums, there's townhouses, there's small single families, there's large estate homes. Um, you've got the gamut here and, and people are attracted to that type of a property because there's such a mix. You know, there, there's such a mix of lifestyles. There's jogging trails, bike trails. People can, can get out and, and mix with each other. It's a wonderful, wonderful area. And not far from shopping. Oh my gosh, the, the Gardens Mall, which is one of the premier uh, shopping destinations in South Florida, is only about a mile and a half away. Restaurants, clubs, everything you would want is so close to, to where you're at here. And where else do you get world-class croquet? <laughs> this is true. They have an international croquet croquet course near the club. You've got a, a four, four diamond resort that your guests can stay at. You've got a world-class spa with over a hundred spa treatments available to you. You've got championship level tennis and you've got the four golf courses on site, one of which being the Champ where they host the Honda Classic, the PGA Tour event, every year. And, uh, and the Champ also has the most infamous holes in golf, which is the Bear Trap. Um, so people really seek out to come here not only to improve their game, they've got a golf school on site. You've got everything you would want right here. Kurt. And if you fall in love with PGA National, there are so many homes here. There's a turnover. So if you can't find what you want today, there may be available tomorrow. This is true. Across the different communities, there are 5,500 residential home sites within PGA National. And there's still the kind of green space that we're looking at here today. So it's a wonderful place to be. I invite you all to come down and, and visit PGA National and Palm Beach Gardens. Truly a venerable development here. Kevin Kent, thanks for being here. Thank you. And this is PGA National, an iconic community. This is an historic time in real estate. Not only are mortgage rates at historic lows, but prices are still very attractive too. And that makes it not only attractive for Americans to buy property, but foreign nationals to buy property here as well. This is Robert Garrison, and you are the chairman of the Global Business Alliance of the Realtors Association of the Palm Beaches, and that means much of your business is with foreign buyers. Correct. Most of my business is with foreign buyers, and according to the current National Association of Realtors statistics, 24% of all sales in South Florida were to foreign buyers this past year. So I, most of my business, most of my contacts come through referrals from foreign buyers I've previously sold to or come through one of my websites, one of my websites that converts into local languages, local currencies, and local dimensions for the property. How difficult is the, um, are the transactions with a foreign national? The most difficult part of it is for the foreign national to understand the difference between his country buying real estate and the U.S. buying real estate. In the, their country, most of it's done for cash. Over here, as long as they have provable assets in banks that are recognized in the U.S., they can take a mortgage in the United States. Most foreigners have no concept of what a mortgage is, hmm. so that's very difficult. They also have to understand ownership and tax regulations in the U.S. 
which way do they, they intend to stay in the U.S.? They intend to eventually become a citizen, to live in the U.S.? Or are they buying the property strictly for an investment? And what I'm finding right now with a lot of the foreign buyers, they're buying for education purposes to send their sons and daughters to universities in Florida, mm -hmm. and they're buying condominiums. They intend to keep them for the four years when they're in school and then either sell them if, if, if you are a homeowner and you want to open up your home to a foreign market, how would you do that? You would find a realtor who has a certified international property specialist designation who's used to doing business with most countries in the world and most buyers, and they would put it on international websites where people in other countries could see your property. They could take virtual tours of your property. They could understand the measurements and their, their measurements, meters, uh, and their currency. Okay. Robert Garrison, thanks for being here. You're a realtor, and uh, you're making the cross-border sales and, um, and purchases easier for um, foreign nationals and for Americans. Yes, we're trying to. <laughs> <laughs> More to come in 60 seconds. Stay with us. Closed captioning is brought to you by the Kravis Center for the Performing Arts. At Ibis Golf and Country Club, you can have it all while living in the heart of a lush oasis. Here you'll discover a vibrant lifestyle, including an all-new sports village, fitness center, and luxurious spa. We're the only community in the world to boast three Nicholas family Design golf courses. But what really sets us apart are our members. Ibis, the place everyone wants to come home to. Welcome to an evening of celebrity autobiography. Every word that you're about to hear was written in their own words. The funniest show in town. You'll weep with laughter. Side-splittingly funny. Brilliant. Hilarious and unforgettable celebrity memoirs acted out live on stage. We are not making any of this up. At the Kravis Center, January 29th through February 1st. For tickets, visit kravis.org or call 561-832-SHOW. Money. You need it to buy a home, and some people have the money to pay cash for a home. But I think most of us still need a mortgage, and uh, it's still a great time to get a mortgage. This is Janine Henry. I'm of Group One Mortgage. Tell me about the mortgage market these days, Janine. Kurt, lenders want to lend. We've seen some loosening in guidelines, and rates are still very low. What is the uh, conventional mortgage like in terms of a down payment? You can put down as little as 5% um, if you are buying your primary residence. If it's a second home, you can put down as little as 10%. Rates have been so low for so long, we haven't heard that term points um, recently. Do those still exist on some mortgages today? You know, it's true. For a good period of time, it really hasn't made sense to pay points, the value just wasn't there. Typically, for every point that you pay, people like to say that you should expect about a quarter of a movement in your note rate. That value had not been there for a long, long time. But I think in the near future, we may start to see value in paying points again. Paying points meaning you're sort of prepaying the interest. You're, you're buying down your, the interest rate on your note by paying money in advance to get that rate. Mm -hmm. So when you say a point, that is 1% of your loan amount. And the person who should have their loan officer calculate what their break-even point is for points that they would consider paying is somebody who's going to be long-term in their home. If it's somebody who, you know, works for a company that is typically transferring them every couple of years, that's probably not the person. If you're going to be long term in the home, then that might be something to look at. Some of the most exciting news in the last few weeks has been for first time home buyers. Yes. Fannie Mae recently announced that if you are a first time home buyer, you can buy a home with as little as 
3% down, and we are seeing the mortgage insurance companies step up and feel good about insuring a loan that's 97% loan to value as well. Mm -hmm. So that's going to just really open up the market for a lot of people. I, I think it's a very good thing for a lot of first-time home buyers. Janine Henry on a Group 1 mortgage. Of course, these regulations keep changing all the time, and you can see the changes right on our website. Janine, thanks for being here today. My pleasure, Kurt. Now for a crash course on how home renovations with vision equals amazing results and a great return on your investment. We're in North Palm Beach at an old Florida home. It's a 3-2, and I'm with Aaron Chandler of Aaron Chandler Construction, and you have torn it up. Yes, we have. 1963 built. We're looking to take the home from the past and into the future. In doing so, we have torn it up. As you see here behind us is the master bathroom to, be, to come. Um, what we're doing, what we love to do in all these old-style houses is take the closed-in feel and open it up. Starting with the kitchen, we ripped out the old brown cabinets, the old Formica orange countertops, tore everything apart, and we're going to increase the size of the kitchen as well as increase the size of the master bathroom and living space. The bathrooms back then and closets were very, very small, so we're looking to increase the size of those by encroaching a little bit into the dining room, which then we're going to kind of turn the dining room into the kitchen, as well as remodel the bathroom and do a little structural as well, too. And when the, and when the owner came to you with these ideas, you could show her your conception on your computer. Yes, we do 3D renderings of the kitchen and general layout of the home. With the kitchen, we can actually show them with our, with our program of what the kitchen's gonna look like. So we're able to live in the kitchen, kind of use the kitchen, look at the appliances all on a computer before we actually move forward with the project. So there's no surprises. Yeah, no surprises there. And, and once you see it on a computer, it helps visualize. Uh, me being a contractor, I can visualize things just by walking into a room, but most homeowners like to kind of see what they're getting into before we actually get into it. So you're trying to keep the old Florida feel here and open it up. Is this cost effective? It is very cost effective, actually. We're keeping all the terrazzo floors throughout the whole entire home, which was actually very, very cool, and I'm glad that she wanted to do that, to uh, refurbish that and kind of keep that old feel, but then bring in the new as well. Um, and again, in opening the house, we're going to take out two walls of the home completely and put in big 10-foot sliding glass doors to allow more natural light in, giving that open feel. And again, no surprises because it's all on computer renderings. Yes, yes. The CAD programs nowadays, you can actually see it as if you were in the home. Uh, when it comes to landscaping as well as right into the home and even into the pool and backyard areas as well. And Reconstruction Confidential, it's really fun to tear up a home. Absolutely, yeah. <laughs> Big stress relief, kind of, you know, it takes some tension out of your day for sure. Aaron Chandler, Aaron Chandler Construction. We're going to be following the progress in this home in North Palm Beach. When you talk about business development in Palm Beach County, you should talk to the President and CEO of the Business Development Board of Palm Beach County. And that's what we have here today. Kelly Smallridge, thanks for being here. Thank you for having me. Tell us about how um, Palm Beach County is growing economically. It's growing economically in so many different areas. Aviation, aerospace, business financial services, communications technology, life science and biotech, and corporate headquarters. These types of companies bring in high quality, high value added jobs, and they're bringing in significant average annual wages to this area. We've heard so much about biotech over the last decade. How is that progressing? It's progressing slow, but it's progressing in a healthy manner, but not in line with where we thought it would go. Scripps and Max Planck are the two research and development institutes. The funds we use to bring them here are no longer available. The research and development that takes place in their pipeline, it takes some time for that to mature and to commercialize and spin off. So the R&D companies and biotechs that we're seeing in are coming in from the outside in a much smaller footprint. Palm Beach County is becoming a crossroads for distribution as well. It is as the consumer base grows here in South Florida, the Tri-County area, as the Port of Miami expands, the Panama Canal, those logistics distribution companies that want to be close to a consumer base are naturally going to come here to Palm Beach County because out of the Tri-County area, we're the only one that has the land available. I would think you would sell sunshine. What else do you sell? We sell taxes, mm -hmm. uh, affordable real estate, both on the commercial uh, side and the residential side, access to airports, 
access to three ports, and the list really goes on. There's no greater place to live than Palm Beach County. I'd agree with that. Uh, what's the direction that the Business Development Board is taking these days? We're taking a, the same approach that we've always taken, which has put us at the top in terms of job growth in the state of Florida, and that is go after high quality, high value added jobs that are way above minimum wage. We now have the highest average salary in the state of Florida, quality types of companies with good paying jobs for our area residents in the targeted clusters that I mentioned earlier. And it helps the real estate market. On behalf of all realtors, we thank you for your efforts. Yes, each of these companies come in and they bring their management teams with them or they'll relocate an entire corporate headquarters as was the case with Cancer Treatment Centers of America. 225 families moved into this area. That's good to know. Kelly Smallridge, please come back and we'll talk to you some more. Thank you so much. I'm here with Joe Floyd of Impact Landscaping talking about the most important part of your landscaping, and that's a good base. A, a good base, and what we start with is the grading in the yard, making sure that we grade it, get it to a nice smooth grade, make sure the drainage is properly drained away from the house so that water's not standing against it. And then we, uh, once we have it all uh, graded, we go ahead and put in the irrigation system. You need to make sure you use the proper size valves, the proper pipe size for water flow. Make sure your head spacing is correct so that you do get 100% coverage. And, and then we start with our base landscape. And on a lot of the homes, we basically put a, 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 a base package together that you can add to in the long run. But so you put on the grass and put a few bushes and plan where the flower beds are going to be. Where the beds go, we typically put smaller type material around the house and pull the bigger trees out into the yard so that they don't, uh, the roots don't invade the foundation and damage the foundation. So when you started with the base, do you have a plan given to the homeowner to let them know what can go later? Yes, in some uh, instances we do do that. Sometimes, uh, depending on uh, the developer, we'll give them a, uh, they just get a base plan from the developer and then we come in and we have guys that work for us that come in and, and do an enhancement program for them. Joe Floyd, Impact Landscaping. It's a little boring and a little dull looking what we're standing on, but it's a great base. Base. Of all the things you can say about South Florida, one thing is undeniable, that we are Canadian friendly. And here's a man who should know. He's Robert Keats, who is the president and founder of Keats Connolly, enriching your cross-border lifestyle, and the author of this book, The Border Guide. Robert, thank you for being here today. You're welcome. I was interested when I read the book that the number one question Canadians have is how long can we stay in the U.S.? Yes. And uh, there's many rules that apply. One is the immigration rules and one is the tax rules. And they're both very different and they need to be explained either way. The tax, people don't care how much time you spend in the U.S. per se. They just want to, once you get past a certain number of days, which is half a year, 183 days, you have special reporting. But the big thing is the immigration that most people get caught up in. And that's uh, six months you have from the date of entry into the U.S. Every time you enter the U.S., it, the six months starts over. Mm -hmm. The only thing you have to be real careful with is make sure that you spend more time in Canada during a calendar year than you do in the U.S. And prove, have keep good records uh, that prove that that is true and carry your border kit with you when you cross. Now border what's a border kit? kit? The border kit I explain in the border guide. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a kit that proves to that immigration person that you are a resident of Canada and you are spending the time that you're, you're saying you are in Canada and you've got proof that you have utility bills, you have your tax returns, you have uh, your driver's license, your Medicare cards, your copy of the title of your house if you're leasing a copy of your, your uh, rental lease and just kind of proof that you live in Canada. That's their main goal is what they want to make sure that you're not living illegally in the U.S. and so that's what they're looking for. They want proof that you still live in Canada. And these are rules that tightened up after 9-11 Yes, obviously. very, yes. Yeah, 
So what are the tax implications then if you stay too long? Or the, the main tax implications are just filing requirements. There, there's usually no tax due. Uh, I say usually, there can be tax due, but it's a filing requirement. Once you get past the, the 183 days of in the U.S. in a calendar year, uh, you have rules that start kicking in uh, that require that you file a U.S. tax return. And prior to that, there are re forms that you can fill out and file, but it's, it's, uh, it's a complicated formula that the IRS comes up with, so you can actually <laughs> be, go over 183 days because of the formula, because they count some of the days you were in the country last year and the year before. So it, it's, uh, it's called a substantial presence test, but it just means that you, you don't want to average more than 183 days for tax purposes. Immigration purposes, it's okay. One quick question. Uh, so many Canadians visit here and then they buy a condo and then rent it out when they're not here. Are they paying taxes on that rent? Yes, it's very important that they, under the Canada-U.S. Treaty, that they do file in the U.S. first and they pay their taxes in the U.S. if there's any tax due. Most people don't necessarily make a profit, so there's no taxes due. Okay. But if they are making a profit, there will be a little bit of U.S. tax to pay, and that'll be a credit for them in Canada. And they'll pay, they have to file again in Canada to report that income, and they may pay a little bit more taxes in Canada. But it's the taxes they would normally pay on rent if they rented out the place next door in, in whatever city they were in in Canada. So. And these regulations are always changing. That's why this is the 10th edition of the Border Guide, um, and you can find out more about it by coming to our website. And you can find out more about Keats Conley. Robert Keats, thanks for being here on South Florida Homes and Lifestyle. You're welcome. We'll be back after this short break. Stay with us. Welcome to an evening of celebrity autobiography. Every word that you're about to hear was written in their own words. The funniest show in town. You'll weep with laughter. Side-splittingly funny. Brilliant. Hilarious and unforgettable celebrity memoirs acted out live on stage. We are not making any of this up. At the Kravis Center, January 29th through February 1st. For tickets, visit kravis.org or call 561-832-SHOW. At Ibis Golf and Country Club, you can have it all while living in the heart of a lush oasis. Here you'll discover a vibrant lifestyle, including an all-new sports village, fitness center, and luxurious spa. We're the only community in the world to boast three Nicholas family Design golf courses. But what really sets us apart are our members. Ibis, the place everyone wants to come home to. The legacy that has been created by the International Polo Club Palm Beach is back. The anticipation of thoroughbreds charging down the field, the solid click of mallet on ball, the pop of a champagne cork, and the excited revelry of thousands. Experience the unparalleled glamour and competition this season. Purchase tickets to a match today at internationalpoloclub.com or call 561-204-5687. The Kravis Center presenting Broadway's next hit musical, January 22nd and 23rd at 7.30 p.m. Master improvisers taking your suggestions, creating the next hit musical right before your eyes. Contemporary Afro music of Zap Mama and Auntie Ballas. Friday, January 23rd at 7.30 p.m. And Steve Ross in I'm in Love with Vienna. Saturday and Sunday, January 24th and 25th at 7.30 p.m. Ticket information available through the Kravis Center box office. We are at the Kravis Center with Director of Marketing, Linda Bertsey, where we are all excited about Flashdance, not the movie. The musical, <laughs> absolutely. We are very excited about this uh, musical coming. It's the third in the series of Kravis on Broadway shows here at the Kravis Center. And if you love the 80s and you love the 80s music and you remember this movie, you're going to love this Broadway musical. It's got all the songs you know and love, so you don't want to miss it. And it's very imaginatively staged. Very imaginatively staged, yes and exciting, fun, you know. Oh, what a feeling, mm -hmm. you know? And what are what else is coming up here at the Kravis? I know the Boston Pops is coming. Yes, we have the Boston Pops, the Esplanade Orchestra, the very best of the Pops, Keith Lockhart conducting, and that's going to be coming up in February, and that's also part of our gala, which is one of our fundraisers for the year. So we're, we love, the Boston Pops have been here before, and we're excited to have them here again. They always provide an, an exciting, thrilling evening of entertainment. 
We have music. We have shows here at the Kravitz Center. And we have cooking. <laughs> oh, we have cooking because we have Alton Brown coming. So for all you foodies out there, you don't want to miss Alton Brown. He's coming in February with his crazy show of food and fun and not to be missed. Dozens and dozens of programs going on virtually all the time here at the Kravis Center. How does everyone find out? Well, we go to our official website, kravis.org, or you can also call our box office at 832-7469. Linda Birdsey, thank you. You can also go to our website, southfloridahomesandlifestyles.com, and find out all about the Kravis Center. Linda Birdsey, thank you. Thank you. Here with Joel Dowley of Two Men and a Truck. And Joel, what I wanted to talk to you about, uh, what's going on here? I think Trucky has found some money, and he's really excited at that extra cash. <laughs> found money, always good. And if you're going to be moving, you're always worried about how much it costs. Cost comparisons are very important when it comes to moving. No matter if you have plenty of money and you're not worried about that, it's probably because you've been very careful with your money anyway. Indeed. So what's important in making a cost comparison is that you're looking at all the real factors that go into the cost of a move. Sometimes people simply say, well, I'm looking at my hourly rate. And while that's one part of the cost of a move, it's not the entire part. So when you're comparing costs, make sure you're really comparing apples to apples. Uh, you may have, you say, I've got a flat rate. Okay, but what are the terms of that flat rate? If a mover is quoted a two-bedroom apartment and shows up to a five-bedroom house, that flat rate's going to change. So when you're comparing cost, make sure that you've asked all of the elements of the move and what are the costs. Is there additional cost for fuel? Is there additional cost for travel or for stairs or an elevator or anything special like that? Oh, by the way, I have a piano, and can you pack everything? That's right. Uh, those are the kinds of things that can affect the cost. So when you're comparing your costs, as is important to do, make sure that you're looking at everything that might be involved in your move so that you can make an accurate cost comparison and you really know which, which mover is going to give you a better value for your money. And being honest with your mover too about what you have. That's very important as well. And that's what Joel Dowley of Two Men in a Truck says cost counts. Welcome to an evening of celebrity autobiography. Every word that you're about to hear was written in their own words. The funniest show in town. You'll weep with laughter. Side-splittingly funny. Brilliant. Hilarious and unforgettable celebrity memoirs acted out live on stage. We are not making any of this up. At the Kravis Center, January 29th through February 1st. For tickets, visit kravis.org or call 561-832-SHOW. Thanks for watching. We look forward to seeing you again next week. For South Florida Homes and Lifestyles, I'm Kurt Fonger. Have a good week.